These haven't been in very long, but look how pretty these butts are. I wanted to personally invite you guys out to Bloodhound Lumber and Lands Woodfest 23. Let me just explain something to you guys. It's special. Hi, I'm Paul Grenier. This is Whiskey and Wood. Bring in the people, the stories, and the success to you. This is a multi-billion dollar industry, and these guys and gals are out to get a piece of it. Why whiskey and wood? Why not? Welcome everybody to another episode of Whiskey and Wood. I'm standing here with Todd Southworth and Richard Dillon, Bloodhound Lumber and Land here in Lebanon, Tennessee. We are standing on the wide cut, true cut sawmill uh, which is a stage. Uh, the grand opening event was last night, and we uh, we had a pretty good time, boys. Didn't yeah, we? yeah, we did. Oh man, it was. Uh, we had chainsaw carvers, we had vendors. Uh, well over a hundred people were in and out throughout the day. I saw Todd loading up some wood. Two hundred. Two hundred people was a count. Yeah. Uh, we had a fire. The best barbecue I've had in a long time. This is my barbecue. By these two Richard. guys right here. Yeah. And banana pudding. For oh, the first time. Miss Kim Jackson, <laughs> banana pudding. But yeah, Todd, I saw yesterday uh, you guys were moving wood and, and selling some wood, and uh, you were all over the place busy at an event like that. So Yeah, we were really happy with the turnout. And let me say we appreciate Idry's help with this deal. Yeah. Um, we had a great turnout. It was one that we needed to be known in the area, so yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been open for about a year now, and um, which is good, but you know, a lot of people who came yesterday said, hey, I, I didn't know you guys were here. I wish I would have known you guys were here. Uh, what's that one gentleman? He said he would drove all around to get 40 slabs dried or something like that. And he yeah, said, yeah. Oh, you don't have to do that anymore because, right. yeah, we're right here. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I stood by the kiln a lot of the day and, and did what I do. I just talk to people and educate them about wood drying and why why these guys have these uh, two eye dry pluses here and, and the importance of wood drying. And awesome party, fire food friends friends neighbors new customers uh and that's what it's all about we uh lots of new customers yeah next week we kind of we were so busy we could not get to everybody that wanted to buy wood so finally at the end of the day i said you know i need to be meeting people so come back tuesday we'll do your wood and that was probably i don't know 10 or 15 people coming back to do projects so, yeah and uh stuff open house Todd and, and Richard invited me to come up and hang out and uh, yeah I'm really glad I did I was actually uh, for a part of it I was down in the uh, woodshed helping customers pick out some lumber and yeah. looking at the figure and it was uh, really fun to be to be part of what our customers do every day and and really I think with anybody it's the people that kind of uh, make it all worth it and and uh, and the good news is we had a lot of leftover barbecue last night. And uh, Richard, tell them the story. I took uh, a whole cooler full of chicken legs and thighs to the homeless, and they almost cried when I pulled up with it. And they were still steaming hot right off the grill. Well, and today uh, they're going to get some pans of banana pudding. So. From New England, of course, and, and uh, barbecue is pretty rare up there, so really enjoyed that part as you guys could tell I like to eat my barbecue <laughs> um but you know what do you think todd so you started this you've been here for about a year 
Um, and you've been involved in the woods. So you had a few different things in your career that kind of led to this. A couple different careers. You said this is your third. Yeah, my third career. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm bored easily. So, you know, I've built homes and developed homes for 25 years. Of course, we worked with wood all the time in the, in the home building. Um, after that, uh, I decided I got smart and realized the money was in the sales. Yeah. So we opened up a real estate brokerage company. It still operates today. My wife runs that. Uh, and I concentrate all my efforts here at the mill and, and the kilns, uh, and I'm having the best time of my life. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. We have Frosty holding the, the squirrel hunting gun. Before we started filming, uh, we were looking for some squirrels, and then they were showing me a good time up here, and it's a beautiful weather. Uh, for them, it's on the chilly side. For me, it's like spring, and I love it. Um, but you know, we were talking yesterday, and one guy, one thing you guys said is uh, education customers is a big problem and not, not a problem, something that needs to be done throughout our industry. Uh, would you say that's one of the things that, that is a consistent with what you guys do? Number one, yeah, education for people. They and we talked a little bit about this last night because Grandpa always said, you know, air dry and it'd be fine. Well, scientifically, that's not the case, and yep. people don't understand that because Grandpa said it was fine. Well, what they don't realize, as Paul pointed out, Grandpa didn't have air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa opened his windows and closed his windows, and, and those guys did that. And you didn't get the relative humidity that you get in today's environment. Correct. That humidity, a lot of people think it's, I get this a lot, well, if I spill something on it, it'll work. Well, no, that's well, not where the moisture comes from. When we try to explain, yep. it's a relative, 35% relative humidity in the air. Yep. And it's soaking it up, soaking it up, soaking it up, and those bound cells, will always soak up water until they're destroyed. And the only way to destroy them is in one of the RI dry vacuum games. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about my story and how I got started in this industry. And it's, uh, it involves wood, and of course. And I was an electrical wholesaler. I, I dealt with Jim Parker Jr. and Jim Parker Sr. I sold them components for their kilns. And I didn't know what a, a vacuum lumber dryer was I didn't know much about it at all I just know what parts they used to build them and um, fast forward my wife and I bought a starter home and we planned on fixing it up and flipping it and you know you work in that career and you become friends with electricians and they come in and talk to you and we were talking about my next project was doing stair treads with old nasty carpet we tore out and we we're gonna do hardwood stair treads and he said you know I got a sawmill and I've got some maple that's down. I could probably get you some maple stair treads for less money than you can at the box store. And I said, okay, that sounds good. He said, you know, you, you got to let it dry for a little bit. And that we left it at that. So we went, I helped him run the sawmill. It was my first time ever using a sawmill. And when we started cutting into that maple, it had the coolest figure. It was what was called spalted. I didn't even know at the time but it was all spalted maple. And we, we cut the risers, we cut the treads, and each piece of wood that we went down was more beautiful than the next. And I was like, I was hooked on it. It was unbelievable. Like it was like, you along. I said, my wife's gonna flip when she sees us. We're gonna have the most beautiful stair treads ever. And, and the only advice they gave me was, you gotta sticker it. You cut the stickers. They said, keep it out of the direct sun and out of the direct wind. So I, I called one of my buddies who had an old hay barn that they didn't use anymore. And uh, I said, hey, can I put this wood in there and let it dry for a bit? And he said, yeah, absolutely. So I put it in there, I stickered it as carefully as I could. And I went back in a month and I put my hand on it and I said, oh, that's still wet. And then I went back in two months and I said, oh, it's gotta be almost dry now. And then I called my buddy and I said, well, what? what's the deal? When can He goes, it's one year per inch of thickness. I'm like, well, if you guys told me that, I might have bought the stair trend because I'm trying to get this done. So I let it wait the amount of time and I got a call a little bit earlier than that time period and my buddy said, hey, I was just in the hay barn and I noticed there's some holes and bugs are starting to get at the wood right now. And I was like, oh man, like I don't want to ruin it. So I got it, I brought it home, I cut it into my, my rough width for the stair treads and I brought it in my house. And of course, our house was not super efficient. We're in New England, it's cold, we have a wood stove. And one thing with heating, 
your heat leaves the building, and when that heat leaves the building, makeup air has to come in, and that makeup air is cold winter. Cold winter air can't hold humidity, so we struggled to keep this house at above 25% relative humidity. And all those boards ended up twisting and moving, and I didn't even have enough stair treads that were usable after that. So fast forward to me going to talk to Jim when he started the iDrive brand, uh, he just said, hey, Paul, come in. I want to chat. You know, we got this cool thing going on. I said, yeah, I'll come in and, and see what you, what you have going on. And so he's talking about the importance of wood drying and why he's selling these kilns all over the country. And when he's talking about all the things that it does, I was like, this is all problems that I had. I lost money on these wood stair treads because of bugs, because of them moving and twisting. And I was like, it clicked with me all the wood that's used in the houses these days and all the guys with portable sawmills, like that is a, a huge, the portable sawmill is half the solution. And now it's fine if you wanna cut some siding and, and build some stuff on your own and not sell it and build some sheds or some furniture and stuff, that's fine. You don't need to dry it if you're doing it for yourself. But I firmly believe once you start selling it for money to the general public who was just, most people were just like me, don't know anything about wood drying. I didn't at the time. Um, you gotta start educating and drying and, and doing the wood properly. And really, the guy who just owns the sawmill, there is no benefit for him educating the customer about the nuances of drying and, and, and to explain it to him. And I'll give it my friend who had the sawmill, I don't think he did it in malice. I think he honestly just didn't understand the importance of drying wood these days. And like you said, your, your grandfather used to say, hey, one year per inch of thickness, set it outside. Yeah, that used to be your relative humidity and it's gonna be probably 14 plus percent, especially when we're talking thicker material like stair treads and slabs. And that's just not enough these days because like you said, your, your homes are now all centrally heated and centrally cooled and typically maintain a 30 to 50% relative humidity throughout the, the year. Now you take 70 degrees with that relative humidity and that gives you a, a moisture content of your wood, an equilibrium moisture content of between seven and 9%. And I told a, a guy that on the phone the other day and he goes, no shit. I actually bought a moisture meter and I went around my house <coughs> testing all the wood in my house and it was at 7% moisture content because that's where it equalizes. And uh, really, I think as a, a group and as eye dry owners, we just have to, every person that comes in, if they say, hey, why are your prices so high? You know what you say? I invested a lot of money in this equipment here because drying wood is not as easy as leaving it outside anymore and doing it well. And uh, would you say, you know, when, when you have those conversations, Todd, you have to get into the importance and give them kind of a lesson on, on how it, to do it? And Yeah, a whole lot of the time. You know, we get a variety of customers. We get very experienced customers that have lots of woodworking knowledge and that's all well and good. They know what they want. They know it exactly what they need and they understand the kiln drying process. That's probably 20% of our customers. Yeah. So 80% of our customers, we're having to go and explain why uh, when they get an estimate from us, it, it's a little higher, especially the thicker wood, the mantles and beams. Uh, and one of the things that we try to do almost every time is explain the benefits of eye dry. The uh, better yield, the better color, the quicker turnaround, all that matters. And, you know, we're drying wood for, for a guitar. Yeah. Uh, we're doing some very good drying. People are very excited about the product. You know, we are a, uh, around here, most of the folks that sell wood buy it yeah. and then they resell it. So you cut out the middleman, you come to somebody like me. The problem is there's nobody else that's got high dry kilns here. Yeah. I'm surprised, but yeah, you know, um, it's just not happening. So we're the only eye dry dealer right now or authorized dealer in middle Tennessee. And, and I think there's one in Chattanooga and there's maybe another one going to Crossville soon. I think he came up and looked at, yeah, I think he's getting his operation up and running. There's plenty of room. 
Guys, uh, we're in Nashville, so it's the fastest growing city in the country. And building, we our customers are just a wide variety of people. It's everything from homeowners wanting the logs to lumber deal done so they can make their back deck out of cedar, to uh, to uh, guys that are building stair, tre stair treads and shipping across the world, and and we're doing the wood for their treads. So it's 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 been a crazy business. It's just yeah, stuff comes like this. It doesn't come at you here. And it's crazy because as long as wood cutting has been around, wood drying has been a problem. And like we said, we, we look at, if we did a map of every portable sawmill in the United States, it looked like Verizon wireless coverage. And then if you take the amount of people drying that wood, it is, we are in the beginning stages of building this secondary source for people to buy local lumber that has a story that came from their property that came from their local area that that has beautiful figure and, and character that conventional mills won't even take so you know the opportunity is there it's it's exciting but there still is a lot of education to go and and i see the look in people's eyes even yesterday when i start talking about you know think of drying wood and how do we get to the center moisture without drying the outside first? Because as wood dries, the cells shrink and they harden and they don't move moisture. And, and once I say the analogy, I'm like, think of a dry sponge on your counter. You dump, dump water on a dry sponge, what happens? The water runs off of it. And, and that's the same thing that happens with wood. And it's really challenging to dry thicker stuff with uh, conventional methods. And, and Richard here has been running the kiln for how many? Since we started. Up since there. we started. Mm -hmm. And would you say, you know, the learning curve on it is pretty straightforward for yep. the eye dry system? Yes, and it is. It's simple after you learn. Yep. Learn, it, learn how to do it. Yeah. Once you, uh, once you get the hang of it, there's only a few things that you can adjust. And it's by far the most versatile system out there. Uh, because we're basically just putting wood in an environment where it can give up moisture as safely as possible. We keep the outside of the wood damp as the pressure difference moves moisture to the surface and, and you guys uh, build your stacks. You can mix some species, you can mix some thicknesses and, and most importantly, you can provide a stable product for your customer. And I know you guys feel confident when they come in here and they buy a piece of wood and they fall in love with it and they turn it into a piece of furniture that's the way it's going to look for for years to come and, and you guys put your business name on that and you, you and yeah that's what it's all about yeah. that's what it's all about so you know there's it's, it's interesting there's a big learning curve with this just right out there you're not going to get the kill on the first day and figure it out yep uh talk to folks that have done it before they can give you some advice on what they found for instance you know the hardness of the wood or the moisture the wood going in some stuff we can cut right here on this mill and stick it straight in the kiln make it does great yep you take a piece of white oak and put it in at 50 percent yeah and it's going to twist and do some funny things we can make hot wheels tracks with it <laughs> um but uh, yeah we, we're learning every day we're learning we're drying monkey pod uh, you know some some exotic woods for some folks um but like for example cookies we found that if we put cookies at the top they're gonna release the moisture quicker and it's gonna keep the wood under it wetter than the other. Cause we we did it, I don't know, a while back and we put the cookies on the top. It didn't work real well because half the slab was dry and half of it was still at 18% moisture. Yep. So cookies on the bottom, by the way, pine on the bottom. You know, you don't want that sap running on. So there's a lot of little things, but one of the biggest things, and Richard has mastered this, is loading the kiln. Yep. It's not easy, but- It's a puzzle. It's yeah. always a puzzle. And this we're grinding like four quarter board to whole count and then it's like pff, no big deal. We can load it, unload it in a couple hours. But when you're having to go with eleven quarter board and twelve quarter board and five quarter board and they all gotta be the same level all the way across and they all gotta be stickered right so that they dry flat, it's it takes some time. It'll take us three to four hours to load a kiln usually. And if we get a real puzzle with yeah. real weird wood coming in, sizes and shapes. It could take five hours to load the yeah. kiln. And that's five hours of physical labor, guys. It's not, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if you get up there. And that's another thing. When, when the customer who knows typically a lot less than you do about wood drying 
and the process. And they say, why, why does it cost this much money when I can buy this green slab or this air dried slab online? And, and you say, you know, I've got the investment in the in the, the kiln. It takes us a decent amount of time to build these, like you said, five hours. That's labor that, that needs to be accounted for. It costs but, me about five hundred dollars every time we empty a load account. Yeah, that's with, that's with labor, what we find. right? And you can also the, the I saw this. It was like a Chinese proverb or whatever that is. Uh, a sign once that said, "The sweetness of a good deal will be overshadowed by the bitterness of a poor quality product." Absolutely. And that defines this wood industry. If you got a great piece of wood and you make a piece of furniture out of it. And I talked to a contractor yesterday. When he first started, he only uh, surfaced it and put um, epoxy or, or uh, varnish on one side of it. And he made a table and he said that thing bowed like a, like a, bow, and, like a bow and arrow. It was a big mistake that he made. And you know, what is the value in that? Now you've wasted that money, you've wasted your time and you've wasted your energy. And it just, it doesn't make sense if you're going to put that much effort and thought and heart into making a piece of furniture. Right. So that's why you come see these guys, which they're, they are iDry Pros, official first iDry Pro location. That means that they've been tested on the knowledge of wood drying and best practices. Uh, they are a great resource for consumers and they've been trained and, and, and they are, this is it, iDry Pro, iDry Pro Network. We're building out this network along the country. If you guys are looking for wood that's local, that's quality, that's unique, idrynearme.com. And like I said, I don't care where you buy the wood, how it's dried. The only thing I would tell a customer who says, okay, that, that price is too expensive for me, is say, okay, that's fine. What do you dry? You know, three inch slabs. Buy it wherever you want. Just make sure whoever you buy it from, ask these questions. How long has it been cut for? How was it dried? And if they tell you and they take a surface meter, and they put it on that slab and it says, you know, seven to nine percent, that doesn't tell you the whole story because we aren't concerned with the surface moisture content. We're concerned with the moisture inside of the wood. So trust an eye dry dealer, somebody with a probe meter, have them prove to you that the inside is dry. And if it is, great. Buy that piece of wood and know you're going to enjoy it for years to come. Or if you want, you can buy the piece of wood, bring it here, we'll dry it for you. That's right. If I buy the green piece of wood that's that's not completely dry, bring it to a company like Bloodhound Lumber and Land and have them finish the wood for you and take it home and enjoy it forever and pass it down to your, your friends and your family and your kids and whoever. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we did and we did this quickly. What do we do it in three weeks? These guys we did three weeks notice these guys here him and Richard and Todd's Bruce. team They did an uh, ridiculous amount of work. They brought in stone. They cleaned up the whole place They set up benches. They they fed 200 people by themselves It was you know if that's not a sign of of a good team I don't know what is because that was uh, that was a heck of a party, and it's not understated the amount of work you guys. You guys even turned this uh, this saw this sawmill into a stage, and we had some great music yesterday. It was those yeah, benches. Actually, one of the cool stories of you know we're drying for Grim Guitar. I, I explained that earlier, and they're manufacturing guitars in our old production facility. They kind of bought everything from me. Yeah, and so I'm drying their wood. They're making guitars. They're taking off. It's like Brad Paisley and, and just all the big stars are ordering them um, it's a unique guitar it's different it's supposed to be changing and we had one of those here yesterday and they literally have only been out for three weeks um, and we had a, a Travis Fox buddy of mine go check out his music it's really good it's a very homespun um, but he was able to play that grew in guitar and by the end of the day Travis was like how much for this <laughs> So uh, yeah, that was fun having having Travis here and and Fred uh, Acres coming over and he did this carving of the snowman over here and I loved yep. it. My wife loved it, so we bought that from him. But uh, you know he he's carving a big eagle uh, 
Fred's a good carver. If you need anything carved in this area, let me know. He does custom stuff. He's done stuff for the guy at the Dukes of Hazard down in Louisiana, like six stories tall. Yeah. So these guys came out and really donated a lot of their time. And, and uh, we had wives come out to help serve. And it's our whole team pulled together. Oh. It's kind of an amazing feeling as an owner. Yeah, it was, uh, like they said, all their wives. First. The, the wives, I want to give a shout out to them because... They kept that food line running smoothly, serving yes, food, did. serving drinks. Uh, they were just as big a part of this. So, so it takes a team. It does. It really does. It, but if you have an opportunity to do this with uh, I Dry, don't even hesitate. Figure yep. it out. Yeah, it's kind of like a family. I know that that term is overused in our in our world it, these it days. It is and it isn't. But if you mean it and it's authentic, like these guys here and. Uh, this experience that we had, you can tell authenticity, and and we are on your side. I dry is our customers are. There's no, there's no real comp. Like you said, you're not too worried about competition because and doing this event, knowing we invited people because there's a lot to go around. It's uh, oh, absolutely. There's plenty of work out there, guys. It's just education, like we talked about. If we can yep. educate. Even the guys that are building the live edge slabs, sometimes they're not even educated yeah. on this stuff. Well, we talked to a couple of woodworkers yesterday that didn't understand kiln drying. Yep. And, uh, you know, they're, they're professional woodworkers, so if there's something they need to know. One of the things we do when people come in is we have a little handout that I created that's basically the myth of air drying. Yep. And when somebody walks away and says, well, I don't know, I think I'll air dry it, even when they bring us a log and say, we're not going to kiln dry it, we're going to air dry it, I give them that paper. And a lot of the times they'll come back and say, yeah, you're right, we need to air dry. Yeah. Or we need to put it in the kiln. And so that's helping. And Paul and I have been spitballing a little bit about what we can do to do that on a major level of a yeah. handout from iDry that we can give people yep. that will explain the mess and explain the kiln drying process simply. Yep. We'll have some bullet points, take out your phone, QR code, something we're going to work on for all of our customers so that you don't have to spend as much time explaining it, have the kiln guy do it. Uh, so yeah, we're always thinking, collaborating with customers, talking with customers, drinking whiskey with customers, super important. Yeah, we had a guy the other day that came in and said, well, you know, I've been buying some wood from XYZ over there, but they've never offered me a beer. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we are in Tennessee. So yeah. It's, we got uh, a few beers left over from last night, so we'll have some if you're in. 